In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a coil spring in Blender 3D. Some popular 3D modeling programs come with a spring generator built in. Blender does not. But I'll show you a quick and easy way to make one using curves. First, go to your user preferences. You need to go down to the curve options. And go ahead and check the box for the extra objects and then save your settings. Now you can go ahead and delete the default cube, so we're not going to need that. Starting with a new object, I'm going to go down to Curves. We've got the option for spirals now. Since we checked the extra objects, you can either choose a logarithmic. That's what we're going to start with. This is going to be your common coil spring shape. Uh, most people are familiar with it starts out looking like a circle uh, as you can see here there's several different options you can use to modify this spring it'll start looking more like a spring as soon as you adjust the height to something more than zero I'm basically setting it to a, uh, a simple resolution and you can you can always set a higher resolution if you want a higher quality spring as you can see here I change a few settings to show you what some of them do if you need the uh, different options here That's going to change your radius and make it wider or more narrow. That, I mean, if you need your spring to be tapered on the top or bottom, that's the setting you need right there. For this tutorial, we're not going to use that setting. I'm just going to leave it default. Alright, once you have the height set where you like it, uh, the amount of turns, you're going to go over to the property side and go down into your curve properties. You need to select the fill method and change it to full. And then what we're going to do is add a bevel. You want to go ahead and set your resolution to more than zero. I, I prefer six to 12. That leaves it to be good enough quality without compromising uh, your polygon count. So add a bit of a bevel. You can adjust that as much as you need to to make the spring thicker or thinner. And as you can see, you've basically created a spring. The only problem left is that this is a curve and not a mesh. So you can't edit it in your, uh, your average mesh editor. You know, if you hit the tab button, it won't let you edit it in the state. So you're going to have to hit Alt-C, which you'll see me do here in just a second. And then you're going to convert from curve to mesh. Once you do that, you have a fully editable mesh. You can change anything that you would like to because it's now a mesh just like any other mesh you would start with.
Next, we're going to create a more classic style spring. You would find them under the seats of classic bicycles. Uh, some older vehicles may have had them. Uh, it's not something you see very commonly anymore. Basically, the same settings apply. And you may have to tweak them a little bit from the average coil spring, but as you're about to see, you can still make a very nice looking classic spring to fit on your bicycles. Uh, some older motorcycles use these for the rear shocks. It'll look familiar as soon as we add the bevel. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then you're going to do the same Alt C and convert from curve to mesh. So you'll have yourself a fully editable mesh. And I'm going to go on and add some basic materials. I'm using cycles. I may not be now, but I'm going to switch to cycles. And then. Uh, We'll add a, a little diffuse. We're actually going to add a mix shader and use a diffuse and a glossy shader together to get a basic painted spring look. I'm not going to go in detail into uh, materials today. That'll be saved for another tutorial in the future. But you can follow along and add some basic colors to your springs. If you're not familiar with that step, I'm just naming the material. It's a good habit. I upload many of my models to Sketchfab or CG Trader. It's always good to have things named because when you import them into another program or another uh, service, a lot of times they'll find the texture by searching for the uh, the name of the mesh and then the name of the texture that's packed uh, and it just helps out later on it's a good habit to get into uh, you can see me adding the red for the paint and this is a very basic material I didn't want to spend a lot of time working on that because I don't want to drag this tutorial out and bore you to death with my monotone voice and I can do the materials in another tutorial but as you can see when we switch to a rendered view we have a nice looking spring uh, two different styles of spring that'll work great on any vehicle that you're working on or I mean anything that needs a spring essentially you can you can scale these up or down to fit any application uh, springs are not generally the main focus of your render anyway so these will be perfect for your project if you have any suggestions for future tutorials let me know in the comments if you like what you see here Feel free to subscribe. I'll try to put out some more tutorials soon. Thanks for watching.